guys. We are back to read chapter two of Clementine and the Spring Trip. Chapter two by Marla Frazee. Pictures by Marla Frazee. Here we go. This is the picture on chapter two. Look at those two twins right there. As soon as I sat down next to her on the bus Monday morning, Margaret started warning me about silent eating. No crunching, no smacking, no snicking, no slurping, no gulping, no... Wait, I don't even know what snicking is. I interrupted. How can I figure out how not to do it if I don't know how to do it? Snicking happens when you eat something sticky, like peanut butter, and it makes your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth, Margaret explained. When you unstick it, that's snicking, so no peanut butter. Never mind, I said. I'll just bring some yogurt. Margaret bit her bottom lip. I don't know, Clementine. Yogurt's tricky. It can be, it can't be the slurping kind. It has to be the biting kind. How about the drinking kind of yogurt? Margaret shuddered. Glugging is the worst sound of all, she said. It's even worse than slurping. I don't even want to think about what would happen to you if you glugged the drinking kind of yogurt. She taped her new ballerina lunchbox. Banana, string cheese, bread. This is what I bring every day for silent eating, Jonathan. Sometimes a cupcake. No frosting, though, of course, because of snicking. But you don't like bananas, Margaret. They're too mushy, remember? Plus, they have that gray part at the bottom tip you call the... The mushroom? I know. I hate that, Margaret shrugged. And your mother doesn't think that's strange? That you don't like bananas, but you ask her to give you one every day? My mother packs my lunch, and then I unpack it and start all over. Lately, she doesn't even notice. She's been acting weird. These days, all of her sentences start with the word, Alan. And he's always hanging around, trying to kiss her. Alan is Margaret's mother's boyfriend. Margaret and Mitchell think Alan would be all right if it weren't for the kissing. I bet I know what it is. I told Margaret, remember in Bambi, how in the spring all the animals went a little crazy about their boyfriend or girlfriend? I bet your mother and Alan are just Twitter padded with each other. It happened to Rashid and Maria in my class last week too. That's probably it, Margaret agreed. They'll probably go back to normal when it's summertime. Anyway, it's a good thing because now I can pack silent eating food. Plus, I can take as many hand sanitizers as I want. She opened her lunchbox so I could see. A couple of sticks of string cheese and a banana looked as if it were napping on a mattress of hand sanitizer packets. This was a lot, even for Margaret, who uses a hand sanitizer wipe to sterilize the hand sanitizer wipe packet before she opens it. Hey, wait, I said. After I thought about it for a minute, how does that work? But Margaret had already snapped shut her ballerina lunchbox and was bouncing off the bus. When I walked into my classroom, I asked my teacher, Yet? Mr. DeMatz shook his head. Not yet. He tapped his watch. Any minute now, though, I hope. We have been doing this every morning for two weeks. My teacher's wife is overdue with their baby. This isn't like having a book overdue at the library because nobody makes you pay a fine. But it's worse because waiting is so hard. Oh, sorry, I said. Then I hung up my jacket. Instead of doing quiet journal writing, everyone was running around talking about Thursday this and Thursday that. This is because our school goes a little crazy in the spring too. We take field trips as if it, as if with all this good weather, 
everybody gets to get O-U-T out of this building. The school splits up to go on three different field trips, all on the same day. This year, the first and second graders were going to the aquarium, and the fifth and sixth graders were going to the Museum of Science. The third and fourth graders were going to the Plymouth Plantation. We had been preparing for it all year. In the fall, we raised money by having a talent show and a bike rally. This winter, we read so many books and watched so many videos that we became experts about the pilgrims and the Wapanoag native people. I still had some questions though. So this is looking like a place or a doing place. I asked our teacher, I asked as our teacher handed out the field trip permission slips. Looking or doing, he repeated. What does that mean? Are we going to be looking at ye old time stuff or doing ye old time stuff? My second grade teacher had been nuts about ye old days looking stuff. Let me tell you, I do not ever want to see another calico bonnet in my life. Only one thing last year was a doing thing, but even that was a disappointment. Here is the big Johnny Cake lesson. Make pancakes. Eat them without syrup. That is all, and I'm not even kidding. Some of both, Mr. DeMatz answered. Okay, I picked the doing things. I decided right away. Me too, said Waylon. I'm on the doing things side. Me too, said Willie and Lily and Rashid and Maria and Joe and Charlie and everybody else in the class. Mr. DeMatz laughed. Well, that's good information, I guess. Lots of hands-on activities for my class. I, I'll see that our guide gets the message now. I need those permission slips back by Wednesday. Plymouth Plantation is an hour away. We'll be leaving right at 8 o'clock. So if you walk or get driven to school, make sure you are not late on Thursday. Maria raised her hand to ask how we were going to get there. Buses, our teacher said. You'll sit with your partner on the same bus both ways. And then I thought of something important. Which buses, I asked. Not bus seven, right? All at once, kids began to pretend gag. The cloud, gack, not the cloud, kids moaned. Look at them. They're gagging. Let's figure out what's happening on, on bus seven. The cloud, Mr. DeMatz asked. Kids were falling out of their seats now, pretending they were dying from just thinking about how smelly Bus 7 really was. But all the kids, except for Kayla, Kyla, and Charlie, they both put their heads down on their desk. They had to take Bus 7 every day. I only take Bus 7 one time, but one time was enough, let me tell you. If you took all the terrible smelling things you could think of and mix them together, and let them rot for a good long time. It would smell like roses compared to the cloud. The smell gets worse with every step you take toward the back of the bus, except that it gets a little better at the very last row. But that might be just because at the very last road, you can smell the exhaust. Bus exhaust smells like roses too, compared to the cloud. Our teacher raised his hand over his head, and everyone finally quieted down. We need to get a lot of work done this week if we're going to go on a field trip Thursday, he said. Please take out your fraction blaster packets, and let's forget about bus seven. We took out our fraction blaster packets, but nobody forgot about bus seven. I had turtles once, Joe said, as soon as we were out at recess. When I forgot to clean their tank for a really long time, it smelled like the cloud. My mother made me give them all away because of that smell. The only people who could find, we could find to take them, lived in Connecticut. But my mother said, no problem, we'll deliver. I bet there are turtles on that bus. Charlie shook his head. No, what it smells like is that cheese that smells like feet. No, said Waylon. What it smells like is feet that smell like cheese that smell like feet. 
I left my classmates arguing and went over to the pine tree in the corner of the playground. All that bus seven talk had made my nose want to smell something good. I sat on the pine needles under the tree, taking deep, nice deep sniffs and thinking about my apple tree. Someday it would be as big as this pine tree. Someday people would sit under it and enjoy how nice it smelled, especially in the spring when it would be covered with blossoms. Before I went back to the group, I gathered a few pine needles to keep in my pocket in case the kids weren't finished talking about the cloud. They weren't. No, Morris Boris was saying. What it smells like is this. If you find cat throw up lying on the sidewalk on a hot day and you wrap it in one of your socks after you have been out playing soccer and then you accidentally stuff the cat throw up sock into the chimney of your sister's dollhouse and then hide the dollhouse in the back of your closet for six months and then accidentally put it back in your sister's room, that's what it smells like. We all stared at Morris Boris. I know everyone was thinking the same thing. Morris Boris was the nicest person in our whole class, maybe even the whole school. You did that? You? I asked. You really did that to your sister? Now, Morris Boris looked shocked. Of course not, he said. I don't even have a sister. I was just saying, the cloud smells like if you did all of that. Just then, the recess is over, bell rang. The kids kept on arguing about the smell as we filed inside. No, Adrian said as he hung up his jacket. It smells like once after my dog ate an entire... Our teacher held up both his... Stop, hands. Okay, okay, that's enough. I get the picture, he said. I'll send a note along to the bus company to have them look into the problem. Chapter two, the end. That's enough talking about the cloud. Stinky. All right. We'll see what happens in chapter three. Tomorrow. See you later.